Hello everyone, Voodoo here, and with season four on the horizon coming out in about two weeks now, I want to go over how I think Havoc Demon Hunter will do in that season. Now we haven't seen all the class tuning, if there will be some, or trinket tuning, which they have announced. They said there's going to be uh, more than likely one or two more trinket tuning passes. So not everything is final here, uh, but we have a pretty good idea of how Havoc will be looking in the upcoming season. Now, I haven't put out my gearing guide or my rotation guides for Havoc or Vengeance yet. Those will be coming. I am waiting to see uh, a little bit closer to see if we get any trinket changes because, you know, videos are kind of just out there and then the same forever. So subscribe if you want to see those. Also, just like, comment, and subscribe in general. We are less than 100. We're like 80 away from 10,000, which is crazy. And uh, let's talk about Havoc in Season 4. All right, so we're going to start with a quick raid discussion first. And in raid, let's take a look at where we currently are. So this is the current raid, all bosses, 95th percentile of parses, which is not a great metric to look at, uh, especially because of just how these things work. If we go down to like 50 percentile, Havoc's actually really good. <laughs> Uh, or pretty good anyways. Also, if you hear a sound, it's goose playing or something. Um, 95th percentile, Havoc's a little subpar. That's mostly due to our single target. We're on stuff like Bulkross, we're towards the bottom. Stuff like Agira, we're towards the bottom. Uh, Smolderon, we are the worst class in the game at it. Or not, I think, well, ew, maybe not. I thought we were lower. What was I looking at? Was it 99th? I don't know. Anyways, we're we're not great. Maybe it's Nimue. Yeah, Nimue were the worst class in the game. So a lot of these single target bosses are bringing us down to a point where we are, you know, a little lower. But if you look at Tindril, we're like the fourth best, fifth best. Barak, we are the second best if it loads, or third best, I guess. Um, so Havoc's real thing is just Cleave, right? So if there's Cleave present, Havoc will be good. If it's mostly single target, Havoc will not be that good. And we can see that right now. Uh, and this should hold true for most of the raids. Now the thing with uh, a lot of these raids that are coming back is that if we look at, you know, some of these earlier raids, a lot of them have cleave. Aranog is cleave. Havoc did okay on that. Uh, Primal Council, Havoc was great on uh, while it was around. Dathia was a lot of cleave for Havoc. Uh, Brewkeeper, Diarna. Uh, uh, Kirog was mostly cleave. And some like Razageth. So Havoc has, over the course of the expansion, been very good at those last few bosses where we have a lot of cleave. So if we look at Echo, Havoc's pretty good at Echo. Uh, if we look at Sark, I think Havoc's pretty good at Sark as well, yeah. Um, but then we fall down on stuff like Rashok, we're down towards the bottom. Stuff like Amalg Chamber, we're down towards the bottom. So the thing with Havoc, and the thing with all these rotating raids, is that we're going to be playing the same build. We're playing the same build as now, which is the current build that's gotten us in this point. Um, where we are doing very, very good passive cleave, very, very good active cleave, um, and middling to below average single target. That's kind of Havoc's thing. That's kind of where we're going to be for the foreseeable future. I don't see that changing. Um, you know, we haven't fully cooked all the sims because we're kind of waiting for trinket tuning, but you should expect us to be, I think, in a similar spot to now for all the rest of these raids. We're going to be very, very good on the last few bosses. That's just how Havoc is apparently. They just, the way they designed the last few bosses, this entire expansion with Cleave, with all that stuff, Havoc is very, very good at it. And that's not even counting the um, good tier set we have this tier that's being carried forward to everything else. Um, however, in single target Havoc, of course, not the best. Um, I don't think we'll be as good as this tier where you want two, but it's also um, like a faded season. So it doesn't really matter. No guilds are seriously progging. Um, but I think Havoc will be kind of middle of the pack. Cleave, AoE, gonna be very good at in raids. Um, single target will be a little bit subpar at, so we'll hit somewhere in the middle there. Some fights you might want two, something like Razageth, something like Farak, you're probably gonna want two if you're progging it for the first time. Um, but some of the single target bosses, obviously you're not gonna want two. I think you are gonna want Havoc. Um, I don't think Vengeance is that good in raid. Like they're fine, I guess. If you have a Vengeance, you can do it, but playing stuff like Blood Death Knight for grips and stuff, stuff like um, Protection Paladin, which you do want one for Sarkareth, uh, just for the no going down strat. We're gonna be very good, which means that Havoc is going to be the primary way to get your buff uh, for raid. So damage wise, you know, single target is not gonna be the best. We have a Sim here. 397, 594 is around the highest we've gotten, obviously within Sim error. Um, with this stuff, now it's possible we can eke out more DPS. I haven't looked at if talents are changing. I highly doubt it considering we have the same tier set. So I don't think much is changing in that regard. Um, but, you know, could be stuff that happens. BSL here is really good. Small changes to gear, stuff like that. So this is about on par with some other classes. There's like a few classes, Fury, 
uh, Shadow um, are kind of all in the same band with us here. I've seen some Devastation Evoker and Arms uh, Warrior that are like at like 440k. Um, other weapon classes, like legendary classes, like I think Unholy Death Knights above us. Um, I think Pal Rep Paladin is still pretty good. So a lot of the legendary classes we fall behind on in single target, but again, we do have a lot of that free cleave. So we will end up being very good on fights where we can, you know, take rage fire to blast the enemies, um, where our soul scar does a lot of damage, where, you know, inertia can amp us into a bunch of different ad groups. So, you know, pretty average stuff there. Um, nothing too crazy. We'll be average. Not that bad, not that great, but Hey, you know, there's been worse. Well, I'll take this. Um, these sims, I did a video on them, breaking them down completely. Uh, I think last week, if you want to go check that out, I'll link in the description. But with that, let's move on to Mythic Plus. All right, so now on to Mythic Plus. Now these graphs are from Jordan uh, at Lo-Fi Banshee on Twitter or X. I'll link them down in the description. I've made videos talking about what they do before. Um, they're very, very useful graphs and they show the top title percent range right now through the 19th week, which is the one I'm recording this. We can see here that Havoc is the sixth most represented DPS. However, it is falling, but there's stuff like Rogue, Rhett, uh, Shadow, Evoker, and Mage, which is crazy, by the way. Look at that chunk. Um, taking up more spots than it, and Warlock being fairly close. But Havoc right now, you know, it's not like meta, but it is in a fairly respectable spot. Now, the big issue with Havoc in dungeons right now is this big purple slice. <laughs> Um, this is pushing out a lot of Havocs. Now, obviously it's not pushing out everything, but a lot of time when you have a Vengeance tank, there's not really a great reason to run a Havoc Demon Hunter. Our damage is good. Our damage is pretty great. Um, there are people that can, uh, classes that can do more damage than us, um, but we have really respectable damage. We have very constant damage. We have good single target while doing the AOE damage, um, all of which can allow you to be very good and useful in a dungeon. We have a lot of stops, stuff like that. But Vengeance brings all the same utility and also brings um, Chaos Brand as well as having double sigils. They have two Silent Sigils. They have two Sigils of Misery. They have Stun. Um, they have two Chain Sigils if you take that. They're very tanky. They have really, really high damage and healing throughput for a tank. Right now, Vengeance is just in such a crazy spot. It's kind of pushing Havoc out of the meta. Now, for these prop paladin keys here that you see, almost every single one of those has a Havoc Demon Hunter. That's just, just because Chaos Brand is so strong with when these classes, Red, Shadow, and Mage, are your top damage dealers. Um, Rogue obviously doesn't benefit a lot from Chaos Brand, but Warlock, Shadow, Mage, Red, all of them do practically 100% magic damage, which means that Havoc or Vengeance is just 5% extra damage for all of them, which is a lot of damage over a key. And also most of your healers do magic damage, even though like healer damage isn't like insanely impactful, but you know, Mistweaver, Resto, Priest, all magic damage stuff. I guess Mistweaver has some physical, but you get the point, helps more damage. Um, now in season four, I don't expect this to change a crazy amount unless Vengeance gets nuked from orbit. Um, However, I don't see that happening. Um, for Vengeance to be really bad, or at least worse, they'll have to either somehow break double sigils, because double sigils is just crazy, um, or make their throughput and survivability such that it's a weakness when compared to those double sigils. Like you're dropping stuff to take that. Um, because right now they have just the best CC utility in the game and are one of the tankiest and most damaged, highest damage dealing specs. They're keeping their very strong tier set. Nothing's changed so far in class reworks or class tuning. We haven't even had any, um, which means that Vengeance will remain that top dog, um, which does push Havoc down a bit more. On top of that, uh, stuff like Warlock is going to gain a lot. Destruction Warlock, I've seen absolutely cranking on PTR, um, seeing doing a ton of damage. Um, so I expect Warlock to gain a bit there. I've seen Arms Warrior do pretty well. So I expect some Warrior to gain a bit. Um, I do expect Havoc to also still be very popular, but we'll have a pretty healthy meta, I think. Um, Mage and Rat will still be very strong. I don't see them dropping off at all. Um, Devastation Evoker actually will get pretty good as well, but why would you run Dev when you can run Aug? Um, but even then, Dev is going to be pretty well in se off in Season uh, 4 for Mythic Plus. So, not terrible. Um, still a pretty good slice of the meta, but uh, we are going to be a little bit worse than in the past because of just, you know, Vengeance being so good, uh, and then all these other specs just gaining a bit. They're making dungeons a little bit easier. Um, we'll see if Havoc's survivability issues come into play, because right now a lot of the things is that we are just very weak to repeated one-shots because our defensive coverage isn't amazing. 
Uh, we'll see how that comes in. I haven't done any like high, high keys on the PTR. I just don't feel like it and haven't had the time. Saving that for the season launch, we'll see. Um, but looking back at the Dragonfight dungeons that ha they had and they've nerfed them all, I think we'll have a season where survivability isn't as big of a deal, but that's just kind of random guessing and we'll see. So expect this to stay relatively the same. Might see some Warlock gains, might see some Warrior gains, um, but that will just reshuffle all this stuff. Havoc probably still be uh, a good slice. You, you won't be down like this or like this. You'll still be a fairly sizable slice of the meta. All right, so that is going to be kind of my thoughts. Um, I think we're going to be good, but not great. We're going to be above average middle of the pack area, which is a good spot to be. You know, you'll have a guaranteed raid spot. You'll get into some keys, um, but you won't be, you know, on the chopping block for nerfs. If those happen, you won't be um, flavor of the month or anything like that, which obviously, you know, sucks for the channel because when we're flavor of the month, I do way better. But um, Havoc still is in a fun spot. Um, season four is going to be fun. Um, again, I wish they you know um worked on it a bit more they innovated a bit more but here we are and they didn't and it's whatever um but yeah you know looking forward to it i'll have havoc guides um vengeance guides might do some other class guides i have a ret and a devoker alt that i played before they were crazy good i might brush off we'll see um but you know gearing guides rotation guides all the stuff for demon hunters that you guys know and love at this point so looking forward to that make sure you subscribe like and comment help grow the channel so close to 10,000. Hopefully we hit it before the launch of the next season. Um, but yeah, we have Alpha coming up soon as well. Hopefully I can get some content for that. And uh, yeah, pretty good time to be a WoW player. Season four obviously could be a bit more exciting with like more crazy stuff they did, but it's gonna be fun to revisit all the old dungeons and raids and stuff. And with Alpha on the horizon, good stuff is coming. So thanks for watching everybody. Hope you guys enjoy your Tuesday and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. A big thank you to all of my channel members. Thank you, Sky Elk, Andrew Keenell, 100,001 Zans, Guillermo Lamas, Brad Wisniak, It's Bulk, and Magic Man 133. Thank you all so much for supporting the channel. If you want to support the channel and get a few perks along the way, check the link in the description to become a channel member or go follow me on Twitch and sub there. Again, thank you all so, so much. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys next time.